Hey everybody, I am back and um, Little Man arrived May 1st, 9.30 a.m. Very awesome birth experience, super happy to have gotten the V-back that I wanted and he's over there sleeping. If you hear the TV in the background, it's so that it's not super quiet. Hopefully he stays asleep. I hope he stays asleep, um, but I'll share a little clip of him here. All right, so today we're going to be doing the pattern that just got released from Lowland Kids. This is the reversible swimwear. They have a top and bottom. This is super cute. Um, I've already made one the day it released for my daughter. I was super excited to do that. It's really simple. There are a few quirks to it, and a lot of people are getting um, uh, caught up on the invisible stitch, hand stitch. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's called a ladder stitch. And I actually just learned how to do it yesterday. So it's super simple and I'll show you guys how to do that. And let's get started. Okay. You need the bottom piece here, which is one pattern piece. And um, I did the high waist version. You'll cut two of these, one in each fabric. And then this is the front um, bodice and I'm doing the bikini version. And so I just fold the piece here so I don't have to cut more than one pattern piece out. You'll need the um, bikini back piece. Uh, so make sure you do the bikini pieces. And so that, that top you're going to cut one, two on the fold, one in each fabric. The back you're going to cut two in each fabric. So that's four pieces total. All right, so this is what I got here. I got my two back pieces, one in each fabric, my two front pieces, one in each fabric, and then you're gonna cut two, two mirrored images of the one fabric and the other fabric. So it's four for the back total. So it's eight total pieces that you'll need for this. All right, so you saw all the pattern pieces. You saw all the pieces that I cut out. So it's eight pieces total. You need two bottoms. You need, um, two of the back pieces in one fabric and two of the back pieces in one fabric. Now you need two of the front piece, one front piece in each fabric. All right, so we're gonna do the bottoms first because they're super simple. So, first thing we're gonna do is, um, the pattern recommends, and I agree, that you want to go ahead and notch these up, just like we do kind of quartering. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the front and the back. Um, Use scissors and I'm going to notch the front piece here and the back piece. And then, if you want to like pin the back piece, if you can't tell the back from the front, uh, make sure that you denote something the back. The back's bigger for the booty, as you can see. Um, so, if you can not tell the difference, make sure you denote that. But I like to go ahead and just quarter them. because you're going to use the side seams and you're going to use these little points that you're making. This is like the super cute pattern. And um, as far as measurements go, I took my daughter's measurements and I mean she's pretty much spot on on 3T and this pattern fit perfectly. So, All right. All right, and so then you're going to put these right sides together. And I am just using like a nylon spandex um, swimwear. I think I got this um, last year. I've been hoarding, hoarding it from boho fabric so all right you're going to put them right sides together like this so the right sides together and then you're going to sew this leg seam right here this pattern has no elastic which is awesome um you can put elastic here if you want to you just sandwich it in baste it here um, but I'm not going to use elastic and it held up pretty well when my daughter wore it. So I'm not going to use it. So that's how you do that. And then, so you're going to surge right here, qu uh, quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay. So I did the crotch curves here. It's not the crotch curve. It's the, the leg. Um, and so then you're going to flip it right side out. So you just flip it. If you need to push this part out, you can, you can do this too. And it'll pop out like that. So then you've got it right sides out. Sometimes easier just to kind of do this. All right, so then what you're gonna do is this is the back piece here. You're gonna open that up like this. This is that front piece. Open it up like this. And you're just gonna sew 
those seams together here. So you're just gonna put them on top of each other like this. And then same thing on this side, and you're gonna sew these seams down here. And then I'll come right back and show you what to do next, which is the, the kind of difficult part because it looks like it's not gonna work, but it ends up working. So that's the part that a lot of people do the visual on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and I'll show you guys the next part. All right, so now we have it like this. So you have the black part here and you have the other part here. And so then you're gonna determine which is the back. And so how I determine that is holding the piece up and the one that has the most junk in the trunk is the back. And as you can see this side, it doesn't have that big like, you know, scoop. So this is gonna be the back here. So I know I need to match up, I'll flip it this way, I wanna put the back down. I need to match up. So this black piece here, it's kinda of hard to tell, but the, this part, so I'm opening this part up. So this part is the part that's down. This is the right side here. And then I'm gonna grab this right side here and put them together. And I'm matching up that notch part that I made. And then you can use clips, you can use pins. I'm gonna use pins, because it's what I have handy beside me. Um, and then what you're gonna do, you're gonna try to go over here to the side seam. So as you can see, I put those together, and then I'm gonna go over here to the side seam. This is when it gets weird, because it's, you're gonna have to pull it through this leg hole here um, once you get past the side seam. And that's when it starts feeling really weird. And I do like to nest my seams on the side here. So that means one of them's gonna go this way, and one of them's gonna go this way. And so then I just find that makes that, um, matching up that seam easiest. And so then I'm gonna pin right there. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and pull this fabric through the leg hole to get to that middle notch, the front middle notch that I made. So this is where it looks super weird, but like I said, you'll you'll get it because you'll get back to the back part. So then I'm matching up that notch to the front notch. And then we just have one more side seam here. And, oh. <laughs> and so I'm gonna keep pulling it through. This is when it looks weird. Keep pulling it through to that last side seam here. And you know you got it right when the side seams, you're still putting them right sides together and you have the side seam. And then you can pull this back through and that's that last notch that we did, or the first notch we did, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, and so then I'm gonna start back, and like I said, it all just comes through this leg hole on the side here. Um, just with the pins, be super careful. And then you're gonna start I'm gonna start on the side here. It just says to leave a like three and a half inch, I think, hole in the back. You can use however much you need to use. Um, I'm gonna leave about a two inch gap um, in the middle. So that's what we're gonna do the ladder stitch with, hand stitch that up. You can top stitch this, but I've heard a lot of people say that it makes it kind of gape a little bit in the back. And um, I have trouble wondering how it's gonna stretch. Um, even using a stretch stitch, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like the pattern says and not top stitch and then show you guys how to do that ladder stitch. But you can top stitch. I think if you could do like a zigzag, it might work okay. Um, but make sure you're considering your thread choice and your bobbin color choice because you are using two different types of fabric and um, the thread needs to be appropriate for both of those. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go over here and serge around this waistband and I'll bring you guys with me to show you guys what it looks like. All right. So... Make sure I've got my back part here. Doesn't really matter where you leave the notch, but um, if you're gonna put a tag in the back, you could probably just do the back part here. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm not gonna remove that pin because I'm not starting on that pin. So once I get it going underneath the knife, that's when I'll start pulling. So you're just making sure, don't pull your fabric too much or this will, this, uh, will stretch out. pins as you go and like I said you're just going around the circle that you've created making sure your seams are still matching up sometimes it's a little impossible slow and 
unsteady because this fabric is slippery. Run up that last side seam here. Eyeball itches. Almost back to where we started and you have to leave a hole so don't forget that don't close it remove that pin all right and then what I find easiest and so that that's kind of an inch but oh well um, it'll still work because this fabric super stretchy so I left two tails and to make sure that when I do my flip this out um, the seam doesn't unravel. I'm going to go ahead and tuck each tail in with my knit picker here. You can find this at waywalk.com. It's called a knit picker. I think it's like a dollar. Grab a couple because the handle has been known to break off. So, all right. I think little man's starting to wake up. May have to feed him momentarily. All right. Just cut those. All right. So then that's the hole right there. And what you're going to do is just flip this whole suit through the, through that hole. And since we tuck those tails, it's not going to unravel. And so there we go. Hold on one second. Let me. I like to make sure that the seam is as high as it'll go. Just like that. And then you'll just kind of fiddle with it till you get exactly how you want it to look because you do have it, it's fully lined, so because it's fully reversible. And that's what they look like. And then I will show you guys how to do this. So you'll need a needle and thread. So let me go grab that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have a needle and thread. I'm gonna thread my needle here. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Match the ends up here and hold them. And this is what I do. Grab your needle, you're going to put your thread here on this side of the needle, wrap it around a few times, and then grab it with your fingernail and pull it off, pull it all the way down, and it knots it for you, which is pretty cool. And then I like to go ahead and just clip this a little bit smaller the end. Don't clip it close to the knot, like super close, but I like to go ahead and clip the ends just a little bit just to make sure that it's not too crazy. All right. So then you're going to grab where that hole is here. You're going to fold the seam allowance in and then you're going to start. Let's see here. I'm using a contrast um, thread here so that you can see it hopefully better on this black. All right. So grab your needle. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So there is the opening. So on the end opening, here, where it starts, let's make sure. I'm, okay. You're gonna put this part in the opposite side because you're gonna hide that knot in the middle. Okay. So then you're going to go I'm going to flip it around here because it's easier to do it like this. So hold on and make sure that seam allowance is still good, that you got it folded. And then you're going to immediately go across to the black side, straight across, and go down and out, grabbing a little bit of fabric. Pull it. And then you're going to go straight across again. To the other side which is this geometric print same thing grab a little bit of fabric all right and then you're going to do the same thing and you're going to go across to the black fabric right immediately across and you just keep doing this and that thread hides so don't pull it too tight okay let me see if i can get you guys a better view here okay so I'm just gonna hold it and keep going and um, but it's pretty much exactly the same thing I just did so let me grab this and don't pull your thread too tight okay 
there. I'm on the black side. Just make sure you pay attention to which side you're doing here. All right, and then cut across to this black side. And as you can see, I'm just, oops, it's not. So I'm on the black side here. Pull it. Then I'm gonna go back to the geometric side here. I'm sorry, it's not focusing. This fabric, I think, has it not focusing that well. So I'm on the geometric side. And let me see. We're almost done. So I'm gonna go back to the black side here, straight across, and then grab some fabric on the black side. All right, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back in to this side here. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit more on this black side here. And then before I pull this loop completely, this loop right here, I'm gonna put my needle through it a few times. Make sure it doesn't twist. If it twists and your thread pops out, try it again. Okay, I'm gonna go through it twice and pull it. So that'll knot that there. And then just to hide the stitch in, or the, the tail, you'll go down, make sure it's not going through the other side. Go down through your fabric, pop it out, pull it through again, make sure it's not on the other side, and then just cut this tail. And that's how that tail will end up in the inside. And then you just, oops, sorry. Then you just cut the, I just realized that you guys didn't see that. Um, I basically just pulled this down. I put this needle down through here, through this one side of the fabric, popped it out, and then I'm just going to cut it off here. Be careful not to cut your fabric. And then that is sewn, and that tail will go inside, and you can't see anything. So that's how you do the invisible stitch. Now you can't see anything. The stitching is completely gone. I mean, there's a tiny tail here that I, that's the part that I didn't cut off. The tiny tail, so just be careful if you're going to snip that. Be careful not to snip your fabric. And that's what it looks like. So that's a tiny knot. Um, but otherwise, you can't really see anything. Um, that's just a piece of fabric, piece of thread. Um, that's how it is, and it's perfect. All right, so we've done with the bottoms, so let's go to the top. For the top. We're going to use this geometric print first. I'm going to move these out of the bottom. This was the bottoms, though. They're super cute. Super cute. Easy to do the stitch. Okay, so we're going to put these right sides up, right sides up. All right, and so we're going to match up the shoulder seams here. And this part's a little weird, too. So you're going to do it kind of at an angle here. So you're wanting to make sure this, this straight part is on this straight part. You want to match up your, that's how you know they're going the right way without having to look at the picture. Alright, same thing with this side. You're just putting these right sides together. sew the shoulder seams and then we'll come back so this is what it looks like when your shoulder seams are together this one's kind of wonky but we'll fix it um so what you're gonna do then is open these up like this we're basically gonna put them right sides together again so put them right sides together And now you're going to do the arm side curve. So this part to this part, all the way down to this part. So make sure you're matching up those shoulder seams. I'm going to go do that, and I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you've got those arm side surged. And then what you're going to do. All right, so this is the front. These are the back. And so now what you're going to do is right sides together still. 
we just did the arm style. You're going to start three inches from the edge. It's not extremely important for it to be exact, but just about three inches. Three inches from the edge, you're going to surge all the way around this top part, all the way around to the front neck, all the way around to the other top part, and then stop three inches from the edge here. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I do these parts here because it was a little tricky to sew those perfectly and so I'm going to kind of make them pointed and use my knit picker so that I don't have to try and do this curve on my serger. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Let's go to serger. Alright, so it doesn't really matter which side you start on so long as you go all the way around. And so I'm going to start on this side and remember to leave that three inch on the edge here. And if you need to use clips or pins, absolutely use them because this fabric is super slippery. So I'm going to start about right there. Alright, so here's this first tie. Just make sure your right sides are together and that your pieces, pieces are still matching up. Alright, so when I get to this point here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and surge off. I'm going to leave a tail there so it kind of just kind of points it. My fabric kind of slipped a little bit so that's why you could see that edge there. I'm going to leave that tail. And then I'm going to start and kind of just make this pointed here. So it's going to cut that tail off that I left. And then just make sure your points are still matching up. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So now I'm following up the sleeve here. And then I'm trying to maintain that nesting that I had going on with my seams here, which just meant I'm, I put one one way and one the other that makes that seam be extra crisp. So I'm just trying to maintain that same thing here so there's not super bulky in the sleeve. And all the while I'm just making sure my pieces are still lining up. And then I'm not stretching too much. slipping just a little bit all right so we're back on this last top part here and again what I like to do is just point it off at the end here And again, this fabric is slipping, so it's going to look like this right now, but um, I, this piece was actually just slipping, so um, it'll look better when I'm done. done. <laughs> Alright, so then I'm going to start again on that top part there. Alright, then just making sure my edges are lined up, and again, leave that three inch gap on the end here, so don't close, don't go all the way to the end. cut these little pieces that went in with the knife there okay so then your top pieces look like this so they have a point now I cut my tail a little bit shorter and then I just use my knit picker here and I'm gonna tuck it back in I just find that a lot easier than trying to get that curve to go in your serger which I mean I, I accomplished it but this seems a lot easier there we go it was getting stuck on that Last seam there, all right, and then just cut that off. And then we do the same thing on this side. I cut my tail. A little bit shorter. Sandwich this in here. Poke it out right at the end. Pull the tail through. And then just cut off that little bit of excess. Careful not to cut into your seam. All right, so then those are kind of pointed rather than round. Just found it easier. And then now what you're going to do, and then you can also, um, these edges that we did too, just so they don't come undone, you can 
do those two. So the parts where we left that three inch edge, I'm gonna go ahead and tuck my tails there too, just so that it doesn't come unraveled. Um, optional, it's just a step that I find to make sure this thing looks good in the end. Oop, let's go on this side. He's making all sorts of noises in there. All right. Tucking that tail. All right, so now we're gonna flip this thing. All right, so if you have a point turner, absolutely use it, but I just have this laying around a cuticle pusher. That's what I'm gonna use. And so just grab one of these ties and kind of push it in. You're gonna to wanna to kind of separate those two fabrics and push it in. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to it. And you're just gonna push it in itself like this. Be gentle, especially if you're using something super sharp because you don't wanna puncture your fabric. And then you just keep pushing it inside of itself here. You're gonna go through the sleeve part. Um, I just don't want to puncture my fabric. <laughs> just a little time consuming, not difficult, just time consuming to get through here. If you have a point turner, it's a lot easier, I bet. So keep pulling it and you're gonna pull this other side out and you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so we got one side flipped. And so as you can see, that's what the tie looks like. Um, so it's pointed rather than rounded. All right, so we got one side flipped out, and you're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side that you just pulled out. Same thing, repeat. Hopefully you're an expert now, and you can flip this one super quick. There we go. So it works if you push the actual uh, tie part into the sleeve part. <laughs> it was a lot easier. Okay, so now it's super easy. So I'm gonna go over to the table and show you guys what this looks like because it's easier to show you. So this is what it looks like now. And then you just wiggle it, finesse it a little bit to get exactly how you kind of want it to lay. All right, so now it is right sides out. This isn't gonna lay exactly how I want it, but you guys get the picture. Okay, so what you're gonna do now, so we're gonna pick a side. I'm gonna start with this side here. So I'm gonna open this part, and this is why you leave that three inch opening. So I'm gonna open this part here. So this is that side seam on the back here. You're gonna match this up. So open this part here match the black with the black and the geometric with the geometric or whatever fabric you're using of course so you're gonna match up the geometric and match that up and then this up here and you're gonna sew that and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side with the other side so let's go back over the starter closer look at what that looks like this part is the front this part is that back tie so I just me meshed, uh, matched up. So here's the arm, right? And here's the front. And here's the back tie on the same side. And so literally what you're gonna do is pretty much put that seam together and then just fold that geometric print out and then fold the black part out and then just sew that straight line, putting those together. Just be careful not to get it caught. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the, under here and then I'll move the camera. All right. So just be careful not to sew anything else in this seam. It's going to feel a little weird, especially if you didn't use too much of a three inch um, opening. So 
as I get closer, I'm going to go ahead and pull this black side out further to make sure it's matching up here. This is why that three inch on the edge is necessary. So this is easier to sew. Like to miss that seam there. Hold on, buddy. So I sewed that like that and then we'll flip it out in just a minute. All right, so same thing on the other side. So go to the other arm side that is not closed. Same thing. So you got your front here. Well, let me open it up so you can see it better. Your front. And you got your back here. Just like I said, match up those seams. You're gonna open it up. The exact same thing. This is just the other side. You'll see that you just have this part open here. So you're just going to flip it in itself like this. See what I did there? I just made it right sides together. You're going to leave a gap here. I'm just going to choose this side here. I'm going to make sure that I'm trying to follow my nesting the same. It doesn't look like I nested this one, so no big deal. Just make sure that that seam's matching up. And make sure you're leaving that gap. And make sure that nothing's in your way. Um, make sure your ties are out of the way in there. So you're not sewing them in the same. And then I'm just going to go all the way to the side here that's right here. I'm just going to go to that. I just fed him. He's just, he lost his passy. Alright. Pull your tail out here. So that's secure. We don't got to worry about that one. And then now we just need to hand sew this one. So I'm going to cut this tail short. Again, I'm going to nitpick it in here. Tuck it in. Like that. Just so when I use this hole to flip this out, it's going to be easy. So that little opening that we have is how we're going to flip this whole thing out. So just go ahead and flip it all out. <laughs> so flip the whole piece through that hole. Just basically like how we did the bottoms, but this piece is just a little bit more extravagant. <laughs> Pull it on out. So then you've got your front here, your top pieces, and then we just need to address that hole that we've got here exactly like we did the bottom piece here. It's the exact same thing. So make sure you got your seam where you want your seam to go. You're going to push this seam allowance in where you want it to go. Just make it match up. 
course, mine's being silly. All right, and then you're gonna knot your fa your uh, fabric, knot your thread here. Oh. Wrap it around. Do this one a little bit faster since I showed you guys slower earlier. Pull that knot down, just like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're gonna go in. So we can hide that knot in there. All right, so then I'm gonna flip it around. That's just how I like to do it. Make sure that seam allowance is in there good, because once it's in there, it's in there. And you don't want that to flip out on you. So then I'm going to go across to the geometric side, grab some fabric with that needle, pull, do the same thing, go across to the black fabric, straight across, grab a little bit of fabric, move that out of the way, okay. All right, and again, don't pull the needle too much, so I'm going to go straight across to the geometric side. And then if you're having trouble seeing my stuff, I'm trying to do it as, as easy as possible to show you guys. But if you're having trouble seeing it, just look up how to do a ladder invisible stitch. And it'll show you how to do this a little bit better. Um, if, you're having, if you're still having trouble and you're like, I can't really see what you're doing. Um, then look up a ladder stitch. And then you just keep going down until you close your seam here. Alright, I'm almost done here. Alright, and so when you get to the end, what you're going to do is put it back through that side so you have that knot. So like that. And then I'm just going to go through one more time here. All right, I'm gonna do one more and then before you close that stick it through that loop there Oops, sorry um, before you close I'm gonna go go back and show you okay so you pull that and don't pull that all the way through leave that loop and put your needle through it I'm gonna do it two times here and pull it and it'll knot it and then you're just gonna put this to get your tail through here Push it down, make sure it's not caught on the other side of the fabric. Push it down, pull it through, and then you can just cut that tail part off. Be careful not to cut your fabric, and that's what it looks like. And then you'll want to cut your tail piece here. So then that's what that looks like. Oops. So all you can see is that knot. I didn't do that the greatest of job there, but um, like I said, you can absolutely top stitch this. I've just, um, I think there was one tester that did the, is what I've seen at least, that did top stitch. And um, I just know that if you don't top stitch properly, it could mess it up and have it stretched in weird ways. So let's go look at this completed at the table. All right, so yeah, fully reversible bottoms. You can flip them to black. We have a black top with a tie in the back. It looks a little silly because it's not on anybody, so my ties are a little silly. Um, but or you could flip it and do the geometric print, and it looks a lot better on than flat laid, in my opinion, just because it's not top stitched down. But this is super cute. 
Love this pattern, super simple. Hope I helped you out um, getting it done. It's a little bit simpler, hopefully. Um, like I said, if you have trouble still with that invisible stitch, check out um, tutorials on YouTube for the ladder stitch. That's what I used. And then um, you can absolutely top stitch, like I said. I would use a zigzag stitch. Just be mindful of your thread choice because you know you are using two different fabrics. But this is a super cute pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you aren't subscribed. We put out a new video every Tuesday. We have been a little behind lately because we did just have... Um, our son sire and which i'm sure you heard a little bit in this video so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next tuesday bye yeah.